there back of my pomegranate that I've been growing from seed and so far it's looking pretty good. It's in this very small pot but it has grown very well and is extremely aggressive. I can only imagine how amazing it would be right now if I had some space to grow it in something a bit bigger. But anyway, last spring you can see it's exploded with growth. So I'm just going to prune everything back. More importantly, I'm just removing little shoots that I don't want. This tree will send out multiple shoots at one spot. So you can very easily end up with four or five shoots in one place, which is not ideal. They will all cause the area to swell and they just make everything look like a mess. Like the ones I'm trying to point out now. It's better just to remove these as they make the tree look more scruffy, more like a bush than a refined tree. And I was trying to get the camera in closer there, but that didn't work. Trying to get a good angle on some of these smaller trees isn't easy. Anyway, here it is after, looking a lot more tidy. It still needs a lot of work, but I'm really happy with the basic structure. Although there is one branch going in a strange direction that I've only noticed now when watching this footage back. So if you spotted that, it's not going to be changing in this video. There's not much happening in May, but you might have noticed the trunk is kind of white. That's actually just from watering. The bark is getting quite textured, but then that does make the build up of white crust more noticeable. I usually try not to water on the trunk, but clearly my aim isn't too great. I should probably make more of an effort to clean it up, as it's starting to get pretty bad looking. You will also notice throughout this video that the moss always tries to grow up there too, which is really not where I want it. Anyway, you can see I'm pruning the back here. This tree will always bounce back very quickly, so it has been pruned a lot over the last few years. That's pretty much going to be the plan going forward. I'm just going to let it grow and cut it back and never really let it get too out of control. I'm probably not going to get a lot more thickness while it's in this small pot. So I'm just going to focus on building up the ramification. I'm also wondering about that top branch. I'm not sure if it fits, but maybe when it all starts to fill out it will make more sense. So I'll leave that decision for another day. There's not a lot happening in July. And even though the tree is under the grow light, there's not a lot of growth. For the rest of the season. This pretty much happened to all of my trees and it makes sense for the outdoor ones. It was always raining and there wasn't much direct sun but I'm not quite sure why the indoor trees were affected too. Maybe it was something to do with the temperature. Who knows, we'll just have to mark it off as the great summer of no growth. But the tree is healthy and that's all that matters. I'm sure it'll get back to its aggressive way this year. In September there's not much going on and the tree will be starting to slow down now. You can already see that one or two leaves have started to turn yellow. At this point I start lowering the light levels. It's pretty labour intensive as every few days I've got to go in and tamper with the timer. But it's better to do it slowly and let the levels gradually reduce over time so it feels more natural for the tree. It definitely works as you'll see all the leaves start dropping off. I think the light levels do play a huge part in winter dormancy. But they also need a temperature change too which is why I always put these in the shed. I can't really lower the temperature in the same way. They just have to go straight from warm to cold. And that's also why I put them in the shed rather than outside. They probably would be fine outside and survive, but my fear is the roots will not have fully hardened off as the temperature hasn't been really slowly lowering inside in the same way it does outside in autumn. So it's better just to give them that safety net of the shed to keep any direct frost off them. You can see here by the start of December, it's dropped all its leaves. Then after the film and this I put it in the shed. At the end of February I brought it back inside, so that's about three months of dormancy, which should be more than enough rest for it. This is where I normally prune everything back, but there's not much work to do. There's only a few branches that were a little too long, so I took them back and that was it. So it's now all ready to wake up and start growing. Once it's back inside, the sudden change in temperature and exposure to some good light usually makes it wake up pretty fast. But there isn't much going on here in early March. We'll give it a few more days and it's exploded with growth. A lot of these buds are probably more open than not, so it just shows how quickly it can go from nothing to fully awake. But anyway, the washing up bowl is out, so it's time to repot. Just look at how high the soil line is. There's so many roots in the pot that start to push itself up out the pot. A lot of that height is from the moss, but still going to be busy in there with roots. I of course started with removing the moss. 
and it takes a bit of effort to get it all off. I'll also just throw this away as I'm sure more will grow back with no problems. There's also some moss in the trunk, which is hard to get off and it's easy to try and get it off with an old toothbrush. Having the moss on there long term is just going to rot away the cool bark that's underneath, so it needs to go. I'm also playing around with using two camera angles, but I'm not sure how I feel about that. Anyway, luckily came out the pot really easily. It's a really solid root ball. Repotting all the time can knock a lot of vigour out of them, but at the same time, if I left it alone, this tree would really start to struggle this year. There's just not enough space in the pot. When you have trees in a pot this size, you really can't leave them for longer than a year. So I started by removing the soil. It took a while, it was pretty compact, but you just have to work at it and take your time. It will slowly start to loosen up once you get enough free. Even though you know I'm going to cut most of these roots off, it's better to be slow and careful so you don't damage anything. And here it is all raked out. So it's a pretty good little root ball, but then it has had a lot of work done over the last few years. And you can see there's some nice trunk flare starting to happen too. It's slowly getting there. Then I started removing anything that was too high in the trunk or too long and just generally pruned everything back so everything was about the same length. And this was left with. So I did remove a lot, but there is still a lot left here. I was just thinking here about the front. Then I realized that the orientation of the roots means it can only really go in the pot in one direction. I haven't even looked for a front yet. And that's probably something I should start thinking about. But it will mean I need a different shaped pot or a different size pot. So it's probably a problem for another day. It also really doesn't help that I've been on my hands and knees doing this my whole time. So it's not exactly easy to see what planting angle works best. So again, that's another problem for another day. Right now I'll just get it back into the pot and just keep developing it. The blue pot has done itself proud, so it can stay there for now. Using this washing up bowl is not ideal, as there isn't much space to get my hand in and get under the branches. But I got the soil in and worked it all in and I got there in the end. And here we are now, where it should hopefully accelerate the 100 miles an hour with some good growth. I hope there's a lot of pruning to be done this season. Thanks for watching, see you next time.